Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure and vehicle review today. We're going to look at the McFarlane Superpowers Wave 7. Both the entire wave, including even the McFarlane Toy Store exclusives. We have the Gold Superman, Blue Beetle, Manga Batman, Brainiac, Large Kilowog, and Yellow Lantern Sinestro. We also have Brainiac Skull Ship, Blue Beetle's the Bug, and the gold label version of an exclusive Brainiac with Brainiac Skull Ship. Now this is Wave 7, and funny thing is, I don't even have Wave 6 yet. I was too slow and missed the pre-orders from Wave 6 in the McFarland Toy Store. So I was kind of took for granted they'd be available for a while, but they sold out the first day. So I found the bundle at Entertainment Earth, pre-ordered it there, and it still hasn't arrived. It's supposed to ship sometime in May, but with each day it seems less and less likely. Hopefully I'll get it at one point, and then my Superpowers collection will be fairly complete. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures, we'll check out their accessories, height and articulation, and we'll check out all the vehicles. In the meantime, let's take a quick look at some of the packaging. Superpowers, DC, Superman, 40th anniversary of Superpowers, gold Superman on the front here, McFarland Toys. On the back, you can see a huge checklist of all the different Superpowers figures so far. I have all of them, except for the Walmart exclusive Black Manta. Still trying to eventually get one of those. You can see some of the other recent vehicles. So, here's the front of the packaging of all the figures, and here's the back of the packaging of these things. So with no further ado, let's open them up and check them out. All right, now that these figures and vehicles out of the package, here they are laid out in front of you. We have a total of seven Superpowers figures and three vehicles. Some new characters, Brainiac, Kilowog, Blue Beetle, and Sinestro. Unique versions of Batman and Superman, and then some sweet rides for the guys. The Brainiac ship is quite a bit smaller than I anticipated. The Blue Beetle vehicle is larger than I thought, but they all look very nice. So, let's start off by checking out some of the Batman, Superman type figures, and then we'll work our way toward the good stuff. Blue Beetle, his vehicle will be last. Save the best for last. It looks pretty freaking nice. So here's the manga Batman. He's in kind of a gray on gray suit. It looks almost like an old school Adam West Batman. They tried to Japanese up a little bit. Reuse, I believe, the Hush Superpowers Batman face. It's interesting. He has long ears kind of going out to the sides. He's got the really weird white eyes and white eyebrows above, the black in the front of the mask. He has a white trim on his gloves and his boots. Utility belt, traditional bat symbol. Cape looks pretty good. It's gray, but almost like a slight blue tint to it. Frayed at the bottom. He has a total of six points of articulation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No waist swivel. Overall, it's an interesting variant to say the least. And like I said, he uses the Hush Batman body. There's two superpowers Batman bodies they use. One is the Hush version, and one is sort of a classic blue and gray one, a little thinner. There have been a total of three Batman figures that utilize this body so far. Here are all the different superpowers Batman figures they've made, one of which being Thomas Wayne. We have a total of five of them, although I don't have the last wave. There's a gold and Zernar Batman there. And a quick look at his accessories, height, and articulation. So Batman here has this cloth cape, old school style, sort of plastic ring in here that he keeps onto him, comes off with ease. And now let's check out his height. And I'm not going to be doing that with all the figures. They're pretty similarly sized. Bottom to top, standing at about 4.6, 4.7 inches tall. And then for his articulation, which I believe I said has seven points. One is the head rotates, the arms go up and down, the legs go forward and back, and they also bend at the knee. Next, let's look at Superman. This Superman is gold suit, and he would be great next to the gold suit Batman, which I don't have. So, traditional Superman, 
He looks, I don't know, a little bit sort of frowny, not really smiling. He has a curl on his head. Gold suit. The color scheme was kind of weird on Superman. A lot of gold, a lot of red, lacking the signature blue. I like the logo on the back. This gold Superman utilizes the body from the classic Superpower Superman figure they released. Everything's the same. The belt, just a different paint job. Here are all three of the Superman figures in the Superpowers line. Although the previous wave, there was a black and white suited version. Now let's check out Sinestro, part of the Yellow Lantern Corps. He's the only one with a traditional accessory. This is the Lantern Battery. Of course, Batman and Superman have their capes. So the body looks to be a lot of new parts, at least the arms for sure. He has the Green Lantern logo, but it's just painted, not sculpted. He has that very unique red or sort of purple skin, elf ears, pointed hair, signature Sinestro. I definitely expect them to uh, release a Green Lantern version of Sinestro and capitalize on this body some more in the future. Same articulation, height as the other guys. And he has this little yellow lantern. It's an appropriate accessory, although I would prefer to construct of sorts. Here's Sinestro holding a lantern battery. Here's Sinestro, the yellow lantern, next to the other green lantern figures that I have, Chomp Stewart and Kilowog. There was a Hal Jordan in the previous wave. I'll get him eventually. Here's a look at the McFarlane Superpower Sinestro in front of the McFarlane DC Multiverse seven inch version. Now let's look at Kilowog. He's a little bit larger than any of the other figures, probably about the same size as Darkseid. He's a pig guy, pink skin, pig nose, pig ears, and tusks that are sort of inside of his skin. Green Lantern logo, he's a big boy. He has all the same articulation. There's his power ring. I believe Kilowog here is the one that trains the new members of the Lantern Corps. And it's really cool to have a larger deluxe character in the Superpowers line. Here's Kilowog next to Darkseid, the two large deluxe figures in the Superpowers line. Here's a look at the McFarland Superpowers Kilowog next to the McFarland DC Multiverse seven inch mega figure version. Now let's take a look at Brainiac and his skull ship, Brainiac's high-tech spacecraft. So we have the standard wide release on the right. People have been finding this thing at Walmart for a few months now. And then we have the gold label McFarland Toy Story exclusive on the left. Different version of Brainiac, different version of the ship. Both seem pretty cool. And then you may notice the ship comes disassembled. It's got eight tentacles for each ship and they're not connected. So let's go ahead and pop those things on before we continue. And so here are those skull ships fully assembled. Each one has eight tentacles, and they're all labeled specifically which one goes where. Left one, left two, left three, left four, etc. So, here's the regular version of Brainiac, a pretty classic looking version. He's got green skin, that weird symbol on his forehead, although it usually it's in the form of three dots. He's got short shorts, his flesh or fake flesh legs exposed. Very campy, old school classic version. Then we have a little bit different version. This one has the three dots on the forehead. He's got a beard, which is very interesting. Purple cape, and then an all black suit. I believe it's the same sculpt, simply repainted. You can actually sort of see the sculpted line where the diaper would be on the other guy. Then we also have the actual Brainiac ships. I guess I'll start off with the original. It looks like Brainiac's skull. Very, very cool. I wish it would make something large like this for the seven inch figures, but it would have to be giant. It has these tentacles, and it has some action features. They sort of all move around. On the inside, it's got a nice control panel, but of course the figure has to stand up and poke out of the ship, which is kind of dumb. It has actual rotating wheels. And you can see everything kind of moving around on the inside. Cool concept, cool vehicle, but it's grossly underscaled even for these guys. Then we have the purple one. You can see it looks like kind of a more modern version of Brainiac. Purple, green skin, same type of controls, a little peg to stand them up in there, and same action features.
And here are those two Brainiac figures inside of their ships. Like I said, looks kind of dumb. They stick out on top, but it's very sort of reminiscent of how the action figure vehicles would have been back then in the 80s. They move forward. You can see the tentacles sort of moving with the wheels. Kind of a cool feature. Here's a look at these two Brainiac figures and their skull ships. Next to the McFarland DC Multiverse versions of Brainiac, we have the regular versions on the left and then the Platinum Chase variants on the right, both of which share some common traits and color schemes with the gold label version. We have the purple on the Injustice 2 Platinum version and then the green and the sort of dark colors on the Page Puncher version. Pretty cool collection of Brainiac figures here. I love that there's two versions of each and every one, including the vehicle. Now let's take a look at Blue Beetle and his bug. This is sort of a flying ship. It looks really cool. I have one version of it, but it's an older Brave and the Bold version. It's kind of crappy. This one looks really nice. It has six legs and some antennas. Let's put it together before we continue. And here it is fully assembled. So first we have Blue Beetle. This is the original Ted Cord version in his classic attire. The body is a little bit different from Batman, Superman, and Green Lantern. Look at those bug eyes. And of course we have his vehicle, the bug. And it looks like a bug. Look at those bug eyes. Blue Beetle indeed. Six legs, antennas at the top, and it has some pretty cool action features. You can almost see through and see the seat sitting there. But on the back, we have this button on the bottom. Press it. Okay, I guess that's, ah, the button's on the back right here. Press that forward, these things jump up like the sort of skin of a beetle. You can have an area for your figures back here, and you can fit your guys into the cockpit in the front. You can see the controls there. And in the box art, they tease Booster Gold figure in the cockpit with Blue Beetle. So rest assured, he's probably in the new wave. Those guys are partners a ton in the comics. It looks fantastic from the front, from the outside, and it has a really cool feature, and add some more figures. And since I don't have a Booster Gold figure, at least yet, here's Green Lantern and Blue Beetle in the front seats, and then Batman and Superman in the back take out Batman and Superman, shut the back of the bug, and voila, our heroes are in the front, and it looks pretty damn cool. Here's the McFarland Superpowers bug on the left, next to Mattel, Brave and the Bold version on the right. Brave and Bold one is considerably smaller, which is interesting, considering the Brave and Bold figures are slightly bigger than the McFarland Superpowers figures. Here's a look at this entire wave of McFarlane Superpowers figures. Now, this is Series 7. I have the entire thing. There is Series 6 out there, which I don't have yet, but should be getting kind of soon. Here's a look at the entire Series 4 of McFarlane Superpowers figures. Then, the entire Series 3 of McFarlane Superpowers figures. And now, the second wave of Superpowers figures. And finally, here's the first wave. This is what started the rebirth of the Superpowers line, all those years later. Here's a look at the entire McFarlane Superpowers collection. I have absolutely everything except for, well, wave six, but I should have that soon. The Walmart exclusive Black Manta. That guy's been on my wish list for a very long time. And I don't believe the Walmart exclusive Reverse Flash has actually come out yet. But those are the figures I don't have, making this an incomplete collection for now. So overall, this is a very nice wave. The highlight of the wave is going to be Blue Beetle's vehicle, the Bug. It looks fantastic from the outside, holds two figures in the cockpit, and you could open it up and have a sort of base thing going on in the back. I'd say runner-up, Brainiac ships, although they're crappier than I expected, but still pretty cool nonetheless. Could make for some background drones or maybe Brainiac skull ship in the far background for your multiverse collection. Kilowog is definitely next. I love having the deluxe figure, and he looks pretty good. Beyond that, I guess next would be Sinestro, then the manga Batman, 
and the Gold Superman, which doesn't really do too much for me. So, it's a nice wave. I'm looking forward to finding out what's in the next wave. I'm sure I've read the leaked list, but I can't remember to save my life. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.